Welcome to another edition of the IPA interview series. My name is Mike Matusek. Today we're celebrating the occasion of the late Gene Swick, who was inducted into the deceased category of the IPA Hall of Fame. So uh, we hope to get to know a little bit more about Gene and we're delighted to have his son, Daryl Swick, with us. And we'll have a little conversation to kind of reminisce a little bit and learn a little bit more about your dad. Now, Daryl, can you uh, maybe share a few thoughts about what life was like in the early days of the Swick family? Well, the early days that I can remember, my dad was born in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and I remember going to my his parents' house, my grandparents, and I remember him talking about some relatives that played in a polka band in, in Brooklyn, and at that time, I think I may have had a brother, and a younger brother and sister, and we lived in Virginia, and, and they lived in Brooklyn, and I remember hearing about polka dances and stuff, but I really didn't get my first taste of a polka dance until... Maybe I was nine or ten years old, and I lived in California. We used to go to a pizza parlor that was called Blinkies, and they had polka dances. And we went there regularly, and my parents would get out there and polka dance, and the kids would just kind of run around and have a good time. And um, those are my earliest recollections of polka music, other than hearing my dad talk about it, but I never heard it or listened to it. Occasionally they'd play it in the house, but I never had seen a polka band or whatever until I think I was in maybe the fifth or sixth grade. And, and it, was, it was fun times. I mean, it was, it was a blast because, you know, the pizza parlor, kids could go in and everybody got out on the dance floor and it was really enjoyable. I mean, it was, it was a, a really fun time. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have three... Four younger sisters and two younger brothers. Oh, wow. All total, you know, since then, a younger brother and sister have passed away, but now there's um, a, you know, one younger brother and three younger sisters. Gotcha. So uh, Greenpoint, of course, in Brooklyn was a very Polish, Polish. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, was Swick uh, shortened from a long Polish name? Yes, it was. When my grandparents came from, immigrated from Poland. They were at, I guess it's Ellis Island or whatever, where they, all the immigrants go first. And my dad said when his parents were going through the paperwork, the guy just crossed off the last half of their name, <laughs> and that was their new name, was Swick. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if it was Swickacheski or something of that nature. Yeah. And yeah. that's the way it stuck. <laughs> uh, do you remember any interesting or funny stories uh, about your dad when it came to his involvement in polkas or anything like that? Um, his involvement in polkas didn't start until later on in life. He loved to go to the polka dances and stuff like that, but he didn't get involved in putting on dances and stuff like that until later. But um, he used to go regularly, you know, to the polka dances. As a matter of fact, they had... Um, uh, an accordion player play at one of my sister's my sister's wedding. You know, and they danced the polka there, and um, and that's the part that I remember was, you know, being that age and going to the pizza parlor. But we moved so often that you know, east coast to west coast, northern California, southern California, in some places back east, in, especially in northern Virginia. There's not a lot of polka music, right. you know. Right. It's just depending on where you were and where the dances were and stuff like that. And I don't remember anything about festivals and stuff like that because we're talking back in the early '60s or whatever. Sure. Um, I'm sure they had them if you were in Chicago or some other cities, but where we lived, um, we never really heard about them. Well, I know your dad had a, a very interesting career. Uh, tell us a little bit about his non-polka career. I know it's been interesting. He was a officer in the United States Air Force. He retired after 20 years as a lieutenant colonel. Um, he's a nuclear physicist. 
Um, we moved every three years on the go. I mean, mm -hmm. every summer, the third year, mm -hmm. we're moving someplace else. Wow. Um, he was going to school part time and as far as um, getting his degrees. I know he also taught nuclear physics to military people and stuff like that. But um, basically, you know, he was, he was, he wasn't like a pilot, you know, that type of warrior, but he was a, an intellectual warrior. Yes, um, yes. And, um, and that's pretty much, you know, I remember we lived in Livermore, Northern California, and he worked at the Lawrence Livermore Nuclear Radiation Laboratory, and, um, and then he stationed at the Pentagon for a while and various other places. Mm -hmm. A couple of military bases. I was born at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, um, and that's pretty much as as much as he ever divulged about his military career. Understood. Now I do know uh, when he was out in Southern California, he became very good friends with my uncle Joe. Oh yeah. By coincidence. Yeah. Uh, Joe Jankowitz and they actually would perform. They would do exhibitions, dances. Yes. Up at, I, at Big Bear? Bear? Big Bear Lake, yeah. So I heard they, they were quite the bomb up there. They, they, they were yeah. the bomb, is, is putting it mildly. <laughs> and I remember hearing stories from other people who, who told them that when that group of guys would go to the East Coast and dance, I was told all the girls liked the, you know, the way they dance. And they said, we want to dance with those guys. And they were just... It was like, I don't know if it was a California style or a faster style or whatever, mm -hmm. but, um, oh yeah, I mean, it was like, I was even impressed, you know, they, they put on their specific costumes, and I think they were called the highlighters, if I do recall. And I remember one time my dad asked me, he goes, hey, I have this VCR tape, can you transfer it over to a DVD? I said, yeah, sure, Dad. And so I was doing that, and I'm watching it, and I'm looking, and I go, wow, Dad, that looks just like you. And he goes, that is me. <laughs> and I went... Holy cow. He had a girl on each arm spinning in a circle. Their feet were off the ground. And, and I, I called thought, that the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, holy cow. He goes, yeah, that's so-and-so and that's so-and-so. And I went, I never would have guessed by those, you know. Um, but yeah, they, uh, John Sanava, your, was it brother or uncle? Um, Little John, Little Joe. Little Joe. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were all part of this dance group, and yeah. it, they were pretty impressive. You know, they. Well, I heard they they would put them up at yep. no charge. Exactly. Uh, up at Big Bear, yeah. and they had big festivals there yeah. just for the October Fest. Yeah. Yeah. They were big up there for yeah. that. You know, yeah. and and I, when I saw that film, I just went, "Wow!" I I never knew that. I knew that he was in the dance group, but I had never seen him performed or whatever. And then when I saw that, I was just like, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I, I was impressed, you know. I was thinking, damn, Dad, you can really get out there and dance. <laughs> and I knew he could dance from seeing him dance at the Polka, you know, the, at Blinky's Pizza and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. But I'd never seen him dance like that. Right. And then other people had told me stories. Oh, yeah, your dad used to go. We'd go to Hunter Mountain. And every girl wanted to do it because... He could spin him around the dance floor yeah. and everything, and like I said, well, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, what kind of man was your dad? Was he a, a patient man, a gentle man? You know, he was. He was very patient. He was very quiet. He very Catholic, um, very military, very Polish. He would tell you once, you know. If you know this is do this, and that's all he would tell you. He expected you to do it, and that was part of his military thing. Is you give an order, you expect them. With the kids, it was a little different. Um, <laughs> the younger ones, not so much. With me, he you know sometimes had to say it three or four times yeah. because moving every three years or, or thereabouts. Sometimes it was two years. You know, you have to make new friends where you move to. Say goodbye to your old friends. So you learn to be very independent. Sure. At growing up, and some people that could be a detriment, you know. I understand. Because my mom used to tell me, she goes, when you were a kid, she goes, you would leave the house at 8 o'clock in the morning, and she goes, I didn't know where you were. 
all day long. She goes, if I had to go find you, I wouldn't even know where to go look. And she goes, but you always came home at dinner time. And she yeah. said, I had so many other kids, to t young little kids to take care of. She goes, um, and she goes, but we never had a problem with, you know, you always came back and she goes, you've always been independent. And she goes, that's because of being in the military style. You know, you're, you're moving all the time. And, sure. Which in one way it made me stronger person. And, and but in other ways it, it made you um, long for making f friends and stuff like that. It, sure. that. There were certain things that were difficult. Plus we all went to Catholic school for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, um, my dad told me once, he goes, yeah, the biggest mistake I ever made with you was letting you go to public school. <laughs> I said, well, oh, dad, to be honest with you, it's the biggest mistake you made was making me go to Catholic school. You know, you get a better education and everything. I said, I'm not saying that you don't. I said, you get a better education, you get the religion part of it, but there's two types of students that go to Catholic school, the way I see it. Those that go for the education and the religion and those that go because they've been kicked out of every other school <laughs> there is, and the Catholic school's the only one they can go to, those were my friends. Oh, <laughs> and he almost went nuts. He goes, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> now, he clearly eventually pulled you in as a helper oh, for yeah. his Polka endeavors. Tell me about that. When he first... You know, first he was he would go to the dances, you know, but there there weren't that many, you know. And then he says, you know, I'm going to try to start putting on dances himself, you know. So he would talk to the bands and stuff like that, and he started to get the equipment together. But and I knew that he couldn't do it by himself. I mean, load all the equipment into the van, go set it up. Um, I'd let the band dial it in, and I'd sell tickets at the door and that type of stuff. And that's how it got started. Mm -hmm. And it, it just blossomed from there. And once he get got into a routine with a hall that worked well for him and that type of stuff, it was great for many years. I yeah. mean, yeah. it really was. But there were times where it bounced around to different places. And he finally learned that, you know, some places just aren't put up, you know, made to put on a dance. Such sure. a, you know, certain churches and stuff like that. You have to have a restaurant. You have to be able to sell alcohol. Got to have a big dance floor and room for people to sit sure. and be comfortable. But uh, you really became his right arm. Oh, as far as, the you know, picking the band members up, you name it, as far as that was concerned, I did it all, you know, yeah. by myself, you know, load the equipment, you know, set it up. And I could only set it up so far, you know. From there, it was like... The band has to dial it in. Yeah, yeah. Because um, that was kind of out of my league, and yeah, and we did that. I don't know, eight, ten dances a year um, for a long, long time, and uh, and it was great because I got to know all the bands, and that was the exciting part to me because to this day I still remember all the bands and mm -hmm. what fun I had with them. I remember when you guys would come out, and yeah, it was I, full circle, and every yeah, uh, you know it was like. Times, yeah. That we was with Charm City, with full circle, circle with the boys. boys yep. Wow, and, great and, trips. Yeah, and that's when it was the most fulfilling for me and for him both. Yeah. But as far as he was in the position where he could go to festivals, you know, go back east and, and travel and do that kind of stuff, where even though I worked for the same company he did, I was not in that position to take time off whenever sure. I wanted. Sure. So I never got a chance to see that side of the polka stuff. All I knew was putting on the dances and stuff, like, which was great because it, it was always a blast. And the people that came to the dances and everything, it was a lot of fun, yeah. you know. And when, You know what, uh, I mean, he was a, a great promoter, a fine dancer, uh, did shows himself. But you know, a lot of people don't know about his legendary generosity behind the scenes. scenes yeah. In fact, I even wonder how much you know. I, you know more than I do because when I read what you had written for the IPA paper, yeah, I, I didn't. I knew there were certain things, but I didn't know the names of the bands and all this kind of stuff. The only one I remember was. Um, the one from Texas, uh, God, I can't remember their name now. He helped them get started, you oh, know. Brave Combo? Brave Combo, yes, yeah. Yeah, they were Grammy winners. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he was an executive producer on one of their albums yeah. and stuff, which my dad did not like them putting that on there because well, he, he was a humble uh, man. He, you know, he, that's not what he, 
he wasn't in there for the recognition. He wanted yes. to promote the music. He wanted to, and that was his thing. And you know, sometimes he, he amazed me. We had a polka dance once in a bar in San Diego. And it was a kind of a rock and roll bar down in the beach area and stuff. And they weren't used to a polka band. But the, the guy that, one of the owners of the bar was from Chicago, and was Polish. And he goes, yeah, I want a polka band to come in there. Mm -hmm. The crowd that came in were just kind of like shocked. But he says, after a little while, they were getting into it and stuff. <laughs> Eddie Bozancic played there. <laughs> and um, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was just... I know for a fact... There are a number of recordings and even festivals that would have never happened if it wasn't for the financial support your father did behind the scenes. He did not want any recognition for this. And when you attempted to even reimburse him, yeah, he would never, never he take was, the money. And he did that for the people. Yes. Because it's the polka people and the music, the musicians, the bands is what he loved the most. I mean, mm. and I don't think most people realize how much he love he how much love he, he loved you guys. I mean, it, it was phenomenal. And and I saw that after a while and I, I said, more power to you, Dad. I said, I'm having a great time and the people are having a great time. I said, it's great, you know, it, um, and he could do whatever he wanted and that, that helps promote the whole system, you know, the, sure. the festivals, Everything. Otherwise, you know, he says, like I said, might go into the waste back of, of the file in history, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was all for it, you know. Yeah. And I'm glad that he did that, you know. As you and I both know, too, uh, many times we thought it would be appropriate if someone would submit him while he was alive for consideration mm -hmm. to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He would have none of that. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. When I would start asking him questions, who asked you to find that out? I, I, I said, nobody that. I was just wondering. He goes, no. He goes, I know what you're trying to do. And he goes, I don't want that. You know, he, and he was very adamant, you know. And I, I said, okay. You know, I, and then they're going, I mean, you can't, you know, I says, I said, you don't know him to, to that point where he, that's not what he's in it for. He, you know, it's the people. He loves the people and the camaraderie and the festivals and keeping it alive. That was yeah. his thing. You his know? And, mission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, till the very end, you know, and I'm grateful that he did it. You know, I wish he would have pushed me a little more to learn to dance when I was younger and stuff like that because, you know, I've had ladies come up to me, come on, let's get up there and dance. And I said, well, first of all, I'm selling tickets at the door, I can't, you know. They go, we'll get somebody to cover for you. I said, well, then how's about I don't know how to dance? <laughs> You're Gene Swick's son and you don't know how to polka. I said, as embarrassed as I am to admit it, yes, I don't know how to polka. Mm. And I had this one lady tell me, she goes, I want you to come over to my house and I will teach you how to polka. I said, sure. We set up a Saturday for it, went up there, after about two hours, she goes, you know something? You ain't nothing like your dad. <laughs> and like I said, I just don't have that, that beat. I love the music. I can sit there at the table and just have a blast. But when it get up on the dance floor and people go, oh, nobody's watching. You know, I said, bull. I watch every mm -hmm. single dancer up there all the time. You know, I see who the great ones are, who the good ones are, yeah. and see what happens. I wish I would have learned. You mm -hmm. know, I really, really do. But it, it, it just never happened and by the time I I just I gave up on the trying yeah. to learn you know it's just mm. you know he did so much for the IPA he was the one after the first version of the boys uh, broke up in 1990 he insisted that I get involved with him with the IPA and we went on for 26 years to serve together on mm -hmm. the executive board he bought the very first computer the IPA ever. I heard had. that, yeah. Before then, it was paper folders and file yep. cabinets. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So he literally led the modern modernization, modernization yep. of the organization, and now the momentum has built to where it is today. We have all yep. the technology. Yeah. And we have a great. That's what board. he lived for because yeah. that was his way of making sure that it doesn't go away. Yes, you know, and because he says, if you don't bring your kids to the dances, you don't teach them to dance and get them into it, 
they may complain and whine and this and that, but when they get older, they will be grateful to you that you did. If there, if you were to write his epitaph, what would it say to best describe your dad? A man who loved the Polka community, especially the Polish Polka community. The people, the music, the musicians, everything. You know, that is what he loved and he wants to make sure that that continues on, that it, that it doesn't go away. One time I was having a father-son talking with him and it was more like he was a father-son bitching at me about something. And I asked him, I said, hey, if you wouldn't have followed your career path as going into the Air Force and um, becoming a nuclear physicist, what career path would you have followed? Clarinet player in a polka band. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's exactly what he said. Because I know that that's, that the musicians are, he loves you guys. Actually, I played clarinet in junior high school. And when the, we moved back to the East Coast, the school didn't have a band program, and that's where my clarinet playing ended, pretty mm, much. Mm -hmm. And because um, my dad wanted to see, you know, he had this vision of me being in a polka band or whatever. And, you know, and for junior high school, I, I had fun at it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But like I said, moving as often as you did and stuff like that, that made it difficult. And not knowing where you're going to go to school or this or that. Um, matter of fact, where they purchased the house when we would move depended on where the Catholic school was or you know, if there was a Catholic school there. Or, and um, that's when I said, I don't want to go to Catholic school anymore. <laughs> and we fought at it because we moved during the middle of the school year. That was one of the few times that we, during the year, we moved. And it's not like he had all summer to battle it out with me. You know, right. it was like we got there and a decision had to be made because he had to figure out where to buy the house. And so he finally gave in and I got to go to public school. And he goes, that was your demise, <laughs> is what he said. Because <laughs> back then it was right at the, the big protests of the anti war in Vietnam sure. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and, um, I remember. Yeah, it was. Uh, and I don't regret going to public school. I mean, it. it it definitely broadened my horizon a little bit because you see things that you don't see when you're going to Catholic school mm -hmm. as far as stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, mm -hmm. and by that time, my mom was getting a little woman's Libby and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I, I can remember when she, <laughs> when she got arrested for protesting in front of the White House and he had to go bail her out of jail. Mm. <laughs> and, and he said to her, that is not the behavior of a, the wife of a United States a military officer. <laughs> And I about died, like uh, I said. The, really, Mom? <laughs> wow. Well, there uh, you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the man who had the, the brain of a scientist, the heart of a polka musician. Yep. Yeah. He passed away two days before his 90th after birthday. After his 90th oh, birthday. After his 90th birthday. And right up until his last day, he continued to serve the IPA as a, a trustee emeritus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we do celebrate Eugene Swick, 2023, inducted into the deceased category of the IPA Polka Hall of Fame. Daryl, thank you for sharing some of these wonderful Thank insights. you. It's, it, I'm glad to, to put that out there because he loved the polka. I mean, I can't ex express that so, so much, how much he loved all of you. I mean... You guys were saints to him. I mean, <laughs> I, seriously, he thought you were the great, and he loved the camaraderie, the people, everything, you know, involved with it, especially the Polish. Even though he, his horizons, you know, were pretty broad as far as French and various other types and this and that, but deep down inside, I know that he loved the Polish polka music, and so did I, because that's, that's my polka music right there. Mm. And um, like I said, he did what he did for the people, for the musicians, for everybody involved that goes to the festivals, the dances, that supports it. He, he worshiped you guys. I mean, literally, he felt he got, he has to keep this going and, and he enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, especially when things were going well for the dances and stuff. And um, we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was a, a good run and stuff. And I remember 
changes that were made or we couldn't get the hall or various other things. And I remember one story. <clears throat> The hall got booked for some reason when he was supposed to have his dance. We had to find someplace else. We found a VFW hall, not too far from the usual place. And so we were going there to the dance, and the VFW hall. Three big biker guys were the ones that ran the hall. And I was just like, whoa. So I, I see the security guards pull up, and I asked the guy, I says, what are the security guards for? He goes, well, in San Bernardino, you have to have a security guard for every 50 people at your dance. And your dad said probably around 150, maybe 200. So this is what we, I said, what, to guard the parking lot or what? He goes, no, for inside crowd control. I looked at him like I said, I have never, ever, ever seen any type of anything happen at a polka dance that would require anybody like that. I says, it just doesn't happen. I says, even big festivals, it just doesn't happen. And he goes, well, you know, we just have to make sure. About a third of the way through the dance, the guy comes up to me and he goes, you tell your dad anytime he wants to have a polka dance, we'll clear the calendar for him. Because <laughs> they were having such a good time, the band playing, the people dancing. And I could see they were getting it. And these were scary looking guys, you know, ex-Marines or whatever. And, I, and he goes, this is great. Because he said, we had never had a polka dance here. We didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is how a polka dance goes. And I said, this is, and I said, you'll never see anything bad happen. You know, somebody may croak in the bathroom or something because of a heart attack. But I said, you'll never see anything that requires, you know, security or anything like that. And, and, and they, they, were, they ate it up. And those are the <laughs> things that made my dad smile. The, the, to broaden the horizons of people of polka music and stuff like that. And when, me doing the dances selling tickets at the door. I knew everybody that came in. If there was a new face, I asked them, how did you hear about us? Not a, you know, tell me more so we can try to put more advertisement that way to get more people aware of the dances. Oh, I saw it on the marquee or I heard it on Polka Bob's radio show. And, and I kind of said, okay. And, cause, and I told him, I said, we've got to come up with a better way to let people know. Because I said, look at Los Angeles. It's got how many million people? They're all transplants from the East Coast. I said, they just don't know the dances are here. and Because I had people come in and go, I just heard that you guys had polka dances. I haven't been having for years. Oh, my God, I've been out here missing polka dances. And then I find out they've been here all along. <laughs> and I used to tell my dad, I said, you got to let people know. I said, put it in a little flyer and have the mailman deliver it to houses. A billboard on the freeway, got polka. And then have an email address, mm. you know, whatever it takes to let people know. And mm. and and he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, we'll see what we can do about that. But by that time, the crowds are starting to, to get a little smaller. And I used to tell my dad, we have to make it under twenty five for free to get the younger people to start coming because back east, the festivals, young people come. They're you know they're still coming. We're out here in the California. You know, occasionally people would bring their kids. They used to have, they said, okay, we recommend it. Please bring them, you know. Otherwise, they're not going to get into it and know it. And, you know, they'll regret it later on. Because I know that I do. I wish I, wish I would have, I may have been complaining and been embarrassed, but I wish I would have learned to dance when I was younger right. and stuff right. like that. <laughs> but, you know, and as I see, it's, if you don't promote it and, get the younger people to get involved, it will go away in, yeah. in some fashion or another. So true. It, or it'll get smaller or whatever. Yeah. Well, folks, I think it's time we wrap up our interview. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the ongoing series of the IPA interviews. Again, I'm Mike Matusek with Daryl Swick. Till next time. Thank you.